Next, we're looking at the daily play time. Um, and again, another interesting thing, people who play uh, up to half an hour, so that's half an hour or lower, uh, they show a decrease in score, which is interesting, because this would include casual gamers, people who play games on the bus, like Angry Birds, just when they have nothing else to do, when they're really out of their mind bored. And they also have a higher standard deviation, meaning that that changes a lot. They're not going to be very close to that, but most of the data tends to be around that 84, instead of around the, the 90 or the 89 that the rest of the data shares. Uh, people who play one to three hours, uh, they, they tend to have the same score, but again, their standard deviation is lower, meaning that they're closer clumped around there. And then there's the obsessive gamers that play over three hours. These are the kind of people that you hear say that they're going to try out that World of Warcraft thing everyone's talking about, and then you don't see them for several days. <laughs> Next slide, please. And then, age at which gaming starts. This is big because when you're young, the brain is changing rapidly. It's taking in all the world around it and adapting itself so that it can better function in society. It learns things quickly. And if it's exposed to a lot of violence, a lot of games, a lot of the effects that those games have, it's going to be more dramatic at younger ages, which should mean that people who started playing before age four would have lower scores if they were exposed to such, such dramatic content. But that wasn't the case. They had about the same score, and their standard deviation, again, was lower, meaning that more gamers tended to be around that 88 mark, while it was, again, more of a gamble for people that never started gaming. And then there's this large bar people who started playing after 15. They got massively higher scores. This is misleading. Because I went back over the data to see why the heck would people that didn't play for their whole life have such higher scores? You'll notice that their standard deviation is two. That means that it's about 95 to 91. For that, that people who played started playing after age 15. Now in college, this would definitely be an A. Now, it's, it's deceiving because I went back over and out of the 185 surveys that I got back, only three started playing after age 15, which is a sign of the times. People usually start playing much before this and also there's, this could be just a fluke, it could be that we got three really um, great, great devoted gamers that just happen to start playing after age 15. This needs more research into it to see if it's actually uh, based on if they start playing after they hit age 15. Next slide, please. Finally, status as a gamer. This is I am a gamer or I am not a gamer. Uh, and as you can see, gamers got slightly higher scores. That's about 1.5 points of difference. And then the standard deviation is about five points lower as well, meaning that's a bit closer. This shows that there's not a huge amount of difference whether you're a gamer or not, except from the standard deviation. So it's, it's just the clumping again and not whether your score is going to be higher or not. Next slide, please. So what does it all mean? What's the point? Let's look into it. There are opportune times to start someone gaming by this correlation. If we can prove an effect with an experiment, then that shows, if we can prove that this is actually an effect and not just a correlation, then we can create a function, and we can create a perfect situation to get someone the highest grades imaginable. And then it also shows us that there aren't many ways that we can use gaming to influence grades, but we can give the student a better shot at getting into that average category. And we know that from the standard deviation. Next slide, please. Here's the formula. Uh, start a child at age 15. Get them playing strategy games only. Let them play for an hour or two every day. No more, not too much less, because then we start seeing some of that deterioration. And have him accept the title of gamer. Now, it's, it's important that before this, he is not to know about games, which means we have to keep him away from internet, TV, <laughs> uh, pretty much anything that people communicate on, cell phones, most likely, and also school. So this is rather <laughs> impractical. <laughs> but if we enter them into some Walden-esque, Walden-2-esque um, 
the world that's created just for the bringing up of one child with education programs where he's not exposed to any other children, we could perhaps create a genius student. <laughs> Next slide, please. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you all very much, and I hope you have learned something. Uh, to go on, we probably want to look into with experiments to see if this is just a correlation, or if there is some causation brought about by the playing of games. And we also want to look into that 15 plus game group. Because if that is a, a wider category, that shows that there is a way that we can improve scores with games instead of just decreasing them. It shows us that there is a solution, and it shows us that gaming can be used to make a better tomorrow. Thank you very much. Question. Yes. So are you suggesting that we homeschool children in a bubble and play to a team? I am not suggesting that for practical purpose. I am simply saying that if we were to do some action, that would probably be the best action theoretically. However, theoretical is not actual. <laughs> it's just this is something interesting about how games do affect our brain. Yeah. So um, those, the graph that showed the algebra per day and how can we go back to with grades, um, was that just strategy games or was that all games in general? That was all games in general. This one? Yes. Um, th this was a compilation of all games just separated into uh, how long did they play. And do you have like a theory about why the up to a half hour decreases um, in grades? It's, it's probably something to do with the fact that they slightly deviate and they spend a little bit of time on the games, but they don't really allow it to impact them besides wasting some of their time. So it's, it's just a time sink instead of something that allows them to grow as well. Do you think it could have anything to do with the fact that you probably can't do much of a strategy game in, in a half hour? That is also very much a <laughs> uh, th These people are probably playing Angry Birds, Flappy Bird, Clash of Clans. Those games that you just get in there, click a few things, and then put it back in your pocket. Mm -hmm. Or Call of Duty, where you play a couple of 10 minute games and shoot up a couple of people. Mm -hmm. I believe we had a question here. Yes, um, your, your charts and you uh, talked about data. Who, what did you use for your data? I mean, was this your, did you, is this, did you originate this, or was this borrowed from another source? Uh, I created the survey, uh, it, was, it was my own, and I distributed it to Laverne High students as well as Central students. That way we could extrapolate to the general community because we had both uh, students that were a little bit academically inclined uh, and students that were not quite so as much sort of thought as, as the general students. And it was taken from English classes so that we would get a good survey of the population instead of, uh, if we took from calculus, then we would just get those students that would be. And what grade them. level? Uh, it was from all levels, but I took one from English 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, and you said that your total was 150? 185. 185. Yes. Any other questions? I, I believe we had one in the back. I um, know you answered it. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well done. <laughs>